Welcome to the Joe Show, wherever you may be streaming Radio GBX. My name is Joe. Joining me tonight, my co-host Grace. Hello. And special local artist, Kenny here. Hey, y'all. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. It's Wednesday, you know, end of the, or middle of the week, <laughs> so I can't complain about that. Yeah, it's finally summer. Well, oh, it's warming up. Exactly. Finally. And luckily, this morning was a little bad in Green Bay, but I'm hoping... The rest of this weekend will be nice because I really need it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's looking like pretty high seventies, I think. Love it coming up. So. Love to see it. Yeah, good. Those yeah. were some great tracks we had playing. Love oh, yeah. all of them. Lots of good local artists here. Yes, love it. Oh, love yeah. to see it. That's what we like to promote on here. Yeah, <laughs> just like you. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate it. I appreciate it because oh, cool. having something like this on campus, I think, is super nice. By the way. So, oh yeah, Joe, I mean, I think you're the legend. <laughs> good outlet. We need we need something like artists you like you to come in here and just. Show them what you're all about, like, you know, share your music. Thank you. That's, you know, all I try to provide. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, feeling good, feeling good. It's great. Well, let's get into talk about questions about you. So tell me about yourself. Um, yeah, so my name's Kendall, uh, but you can call me Kenny. Um, I live in Green Bay. I'm not originally from Green Bay. I, I grew up in Portage, which if you don't know, it's kind of, it's close to the Dells, close to Madison, but so it's a little bit in, in between of everything you want. But um, I came to Green Bay to pursue a computer science degree. I started that the courses and all that and I realized I really hated it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I I started doing some some thinking and I realized I just wanted to do what I wanted to do, which was music. So now I'm here. I'm an audio production major. Um I'm also a communications minor, so I'm pursuing that and I'm a junior standing. So That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, you covered some of the questions I was going to ask you already, but Oh, it's, no, sorry. that's good. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it's really cool to see, like, you know, you, you come here originally, and then even the audio production degree is pretty recent, like, mm -hmm. almost a part of. So, like, just seeing that, like, you finding, like, something that you enjoyed with that and then pursuing that more here. Definitely. So it's cool I, that you found that. Yeah, and I feel like, especially since, I, I think I came at a really, really good time because it, it was right in between when the audio production degree actually started getting enough, like, resources to actually, uh, like, run and provide students, like, the proper education. And I saw that and where it was going, and I was just really excited to jump on board. So exactly, now yeah. they're building new studios, like oh, a lot of cool stuff coming. Yes, out. yes, so many great opportunities. I'm, I'm so stoked to see yeah. it all once it's all done. It seems best, like a lot of work. Oh yeah, best time to get involved right now. Yes, a hundred percent. So talking about that too, like you're a musician. So what kind of instruments do you play? So, um, I am primarily a percussionist. Uh, I, when I was a kid, I usually sang. I were, I guess I'll start from the beginning. Um, I was, when I was born, like I was singing all around, you know, you couldn't stop me from singing. And eventually um, in middle school, my parents were like, okay, you got to play an instrument though. You got to join band. And um, I was like, okay, well, I'm only going to do it if I can be a drummer. And um, I had to audition, which was kind of crazy. Like my band director just tapped out some rhythms and was like, can you do this? And I, I guess I did it. So nice. I got in. Um, and then I've just been continuing playing drums since middle school um, until now. So that's my primary instrument is the drum kit. I love playing like any style of music on that thing. Um, but as I've been in college, I've started uh, picking up more like I've been, become more familiar with like the keyboard and the marimba with the classes I've been taking. Um, I also play a lot of auxiliary percussion because like being in band, Joe, I'm sure yeah. you're, you're in band too. So I'm sure you know like the they often are like there's a lot of different instruments that you can play within the percussion section. So I kind of got a little bit of all of them. So like, give me anything I can shake and I guess I can shake it, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. All around percussion, like just get to learn all the cool things. You can exactly, just, right. Yeah. And then like you pull out something that you've never heard of before, but it's needed for just this one song type of thing, you know? But it's like, oh, that's what was missing. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but other than that, um, I, yeah, I've just been trying to focus a lot more on keyboard though. Awesome. Yeah. Is, you have, like, is the keyboard your favorite or your drum set? Um, what would you say? I would say the drum kit is still my favorite, um, but definitely learning, because I, I don't know, I feel like playing music is a great form of like expression and being able to, in a way, like express myself through the keyboard, I think that I've just been really enjoying that. Awesome. And like, I can hear that in your new songs too. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> Coming up soon, you get to hear a lot of that. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> so I have one more question of the segment. Um, then we can break with some music questions, and then we'll go to Grace has fun questions coming up for you. <laughs> so what inspires you to start, you know, making music, playing the music that you make? Hmm. My biggest inspiration for me, like, regarding music has been my parents. Both of, 
my when I was growing up, both of my parents were musicians. My dad, um, he plays. He's a really good guitarist, and for a while, he ran a little guitar studio. So he, I uh, did guitar lessons, uh, sold guitars, that kind of stuff. Um, and then my mother, uh, she was a music teacher at my elementary school. So I, I was always involved in music with her because it was, you know, her both of their jobs. I was just always around it, and I think. Um, just being around it, I got to realize how nice like the music is and enjoying that aspect of it. Um, but also just the different artists I've been listening to. Um, like I love like exploring different genres of music that I feel like give me new inspiration yeah. every time I listen to it. So that's that's my answer. <laughs> that's cool. Just being all around involved in music in general. For yeah. sure. For sure. Growing up with it. Yeah. Yeah. If, I was in uh, musical theater a lot too. Really? So uh, like doing performances when I was like a, a little kiddo. Okay. So and I always enjoyed that. So I guess as I was deciding my career, I was like, well, what do I really like doing with my life? And I said, well, music. Let's do exactly. it. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we have that opportunity here on campus for you to Definitely. pursue that. Definitely. And that's what we should. I mean, as college students pursuing what we want to, you know, do in the future. Right. Love to see it. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to Joe's show. The last song you heard was Hold it, Holding Back by Kenny himself right here. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. <laughs> How you think? doing? Good. What do you think? I liked it. It was a bop. I was kind of yeah, doing a little dance at that. Like end. club music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, when, I, when I was making this song, I was really, I was, I've been listening to a lot of Aphex Twin. You guys okay. listen to them? I heard them. Yeah. It's and it's like, it's it's like it's hilarious. It's dance music that like if you put it on in the club, I think everyone's just gonna be sad type of thing. Um, ah, yeah. But um, I feel like that like fusion of like kind of like familiar dance beats with like an ambient like. Kind of background that's kind of yeah. what i really like going for and that's what i really tried to push with this song um and yeah i, I had a really good time making it too so that's awesome we got some questions for grace here all right, all right. i got some questions we'll get, talk more some music questions about the album too coming up soon yes stay tuned all right so i've got a couple right. i won't bite i promise <laughs> um this one is we're gonna do like a music one and then kind of shift gears a little bit so I would like to know. I'm very curious. Um, tell me about an artist you would like to collaborate with in the future and why. So, like, what would be your ideal dream collab if you could have one? Hmm. There's a few options that come to my head, but I think considering, like, the state of where music is right now, I think mm -hmm. I'd really, really, really want to collaborate with uh, an artist called JPEG Mafia. Never heard of him. Yeah, he he makes instrumental hip hop. Okay. And it's it's very experimental. Like a lot of his um the beats that he uses, he's a producer and rapper and vocalist. Mm -hmm. He does the whole package, which I it's kind of what inspired me in a little bit of a way. But um, yeah, he's the whole package, and he just uses the the weirdest beats that you could ever imagine. But then is like making them into hits that like you just can't help but mm. like vibe to at the yeah. very least. Um. So that's probably my main artist I would want to collaborate with. Um, otherwise, I really love Elizabeth Frazier from uh, the Cocteau Twins. Have you guys heard of them? Mm -mm. I've heard of them. No. Great, great. Group. You guys should check it out, 100%. <laughs> um, but she, she's probably like one of my favorite vocalists of all time. She's like, I feel like we could make something really cool because her vocals are very heavenly and like ethereal. And we got mm -hmm. the ambient, somewhat ethereal instrumental. I think it would just work perfectly i'm not sure if, if she makes music much anymore but if we could get her back that'd be awesome yeah <laughs> oh yeah so i just thought of this one i don't have it written down but you said like the keyword hip-hop and my brain went to the new eminem song have you heard it yet i've heard little snippets of it i saw snippets and then i sat down and listened to it the other night and i'm like my brain can't comprehend with how fast it is but like it's good. It's pretty good. I don't know. Call me a hater. I thought it was a little corny. I don't know. From what I heard, I felt like <laughs> the instrument or like um like the sample. I I don't know. I feel yeah, like I mean it's it's throwing back to like uh like original like Slim Shady. It's kind of like I yes. feel like it's it's like a goodbye Slim Shady like I'm moving on kind of thing. I feel like is the what it's supposed to be, but I don't really know. Cause I just heard the song, I heard about it, and I'm like, oh, Eminem's back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know nothing else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I hope uh, Slim Shady comes back. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Please. All right. So my next question. Well, technically, I should say this is the third question because that was impromptu. 
But um, what's the best piece of advice another musician or perhaps a friend has given you? Hmm. It doesn't even have to be music related. It could just be, it could be anything, honestly. I I think um, I don't have, so Rick Rubin, I've been, uh, he's like a producer and stuff. He um, recently released a book. It's called The Creative Act, A Way of Being. And that book has a lot of advice on how to channel your creativity. Mm -hmm. And and within it, there's like a lot of advice to kind of just get you in the moment. But the main thing I kind of took from that book was um, being comfortable with kind of just taking whatever you can and seeing if it sticks. Questioning like literally like anything you're doing within not only like the studio, but like your life, like kind of just really like trying to like elevate it or just try to see if you can make it any more Mm -hmm. of like an expression of yourself or more of what you want, that type of thing. So that's that's been my biggest thing of advice because I think you can apply it to a lot of things, like especially if you're trying to like pursue yourself, like as a college student. Um, I lost my track. <laughs> no, I, I, got, I get what you're going with but, that. Um, yeah, it, basically like you got to try stuff. You got um, to see what sticks. So I feel mm-hmm. like that's important for yeah, like not that. only myself, but yeah. Um, my last question. This is one that I started asking recently, and I think it's a lot of fun. So it's it's a it's a thinker. You got to think about it. Okay. Um, if you were planning a dinner party, you had 10 open seats. Who would you pick to join you, whether that person is alive or dead? Oh. See what I mean? It's it's a stumper. It is a thinker. (laughs) Uh, First person that came to my mind is uh, Jeff Buckley. Do you guys know Jeff Buckley? Sounds familiar. I just don't know why. He 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 was very popular in the '90s, um, but he he passed super early in an unfortunate Mm. accident. So he really only got to release one album. But many like consider it like one of the greatest of all time. As as do I do. I think his album Grace is it's perfect, and that's why I feel like getting to see him would be like crazy you know mm-hmm. that kind of thing yeah um who else i guess we can throw jpeg mafia in there he's someone <laughs> who's totally chaotic i feel yeah. like yeah bring the fun um let's bring lil wayne too you know yeah, right, let's make it let's make it a party right <laughs> let's make it a, a dinner party uh love me some lil wayne you know insane like most insane freestyler ever mm-hmm. right uh i talked about elizabeth fraser earlier i'll bring mm-hmm. her there um Oh, let's bring Steve Irwin back. Can we bring yes. Steve Irwin back for dinner? Yes. I, I would, I, I feel like, because not only was he such a great like environmentalist, but like he had a lot of great advice as well. So yeah. I would He's love part it. of the Holy Trinity, remember. What, what, who are the other the two? The Holy Trinity is Bob Ross, Steve Irwin, and Mr. Rogers. Oh. Yep. That's good. That's like a good the, the Holy Trinity of like um, wholesome people. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was I at? It's, I think you're four or five. I don't know. I'll, I'll, say, I'll say five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you're at least have one hand. Yeah. <laughs> let's do, hmm. I know who I'd pick in my 10. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm seeing a lot of Beyonce posters in the studio. And honestly, <laughs> Beyonce's gotta be fun, right? I mean, I, I would being imagine. in the presence of a queen, <laughs> you know, uh, Beyonce would be fun. We can bring Jay-Z too, Jay-Z's yeah. cool. Um, who else? Oh, I would love to bring, I'm doing all musicians because I guess no, that's, that's what's on my mind. Yeah, yeah. that's all right. But yeah. um, let's fill out with some Odd Future. We'll do Frank Ocean, Tyler the Creator, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Earl Sweatshirt nice. for those last three. because. Uh, now that they've matured more, mm-hmm. it's not going to be the same vibe as Ob Future, but like, come on, they still got to be, <laughs> you know, yeah. a lot, yeah. somewhat fun. So yeah, sure. That that'll be my list. All right. Yeah. Um. Well, that's all I have. That's, that's nice. honestly that that last one is always my favorite. Like, I started. Who did I start asking it to? Wasn't it Zane? I think it was Zane. Was the first person? No, no? you weren't here for Zane. No, it was Jackson. It was Jackson. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot I wasn't here for yeah. Zane. But no, Jackson is the first person I asked. And then I think it was Sinner and the Saint. Yeah. And then now you, okay. right? Yeah, the third <laughs> person I've asked. So yeah. every every time I've asked this one, there's always such like people automatically go to like the musician thing. 
which is, I mean, fair for this this show, but everybody's answers have been so interesting. Really? Yeah, like last time when we had Sinner and the Saint, um, we had like, I think we had like Paramore, so Haley Williams was thrown in there, and mm, Patrick Stump. Yeah. Um, I don't remember who else. My brain wants to say Kurt Cobain, but that just might be my brain thinking, and that's who I'd want, but... I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember, but go watch it on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> go, ch- go check out <laughs> Radio GBX. Radio GBX's YouTube for that. Yeah. And then you check out me. this video later in case you missed this too. Yeah. Live. <laughs> Shall we turn it back to the music? Yeah. All right. Sure. Welcome back to the Joe Show. The last song you heard was Wilding Dead Plants by Kendall himself, right here. Yep, yep. Right, that was radio. Me. So I heard that part before, that like the last ending part was pretty funny. Thank you. So, where did that come from? Like, how did, how did, how did you just come up with that part? Um, so. Kind of relating back to JPEG Mafia a bit. Okay, I, yeah. I draw a lot of inspiration for JPEG Mafia. Okay. And he kind of using like weird, like, I don't know, vocal parts to kind of tell a story or like somewhat uh, just add to the atmosphere of it. So I was honest, literally just looking through my camera, like my camera roll, just trying to see if I had any videos or something that I could just throw in there okay. to kind of like give it some sort of like ending that's a little bit extra. Um, in that clip it's me and my girlfriend and we were do you, do you guys know the youtubers retin link yeah <laughs> i was gonna guess i was gonna, i heard retin link and i'm like goodness that's why i went yes. right away yeah, yeah. do you yeah, know yeah. at the end when they um like they have the people who record themselves and it's like it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality yeah yeah we were like fake trying to do that <laughs> but she thought it was corny so um and like in this song i rap a little bit i'm not primarily a rapper like i just I don't know, I kind of, I think it kind of felt the vibe of the song, so that's why I went with it. But I guess that was kind of, the corny part kind of stuck out to me. I was like, okay, <laughs> like a little bit of self-awareness, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. having fun with it. Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah. Um, yeah. But I guess that's kind of to bring light to like the like the purpose of the song. It's called Watering Dead Plants, which um, is kind of just relating, like I guess it, for me, that was kind of me uncovering like a relationship where I felt, it felt like I was watering a dead plant. You know, I'm giving stuff, to this relationship, to this person, trying to get some sort of like cooperation between us and like something can grow, but it just doesn't, it's just not working out. So it's just kind of me just like, you know what, I gotta step back at least a little bit from that relationship. So, yeah. So that, I guess that end sample was kind of a little bit to lighten the mood, I guess. Yeah, that's but, cool. Yeah. No, I like it. It was something like kind of funny out, like at the end, but it was like, I don't know, I like when they do like, they're really creative. Like, Good yeah. to like add something like you said. It just was missing that something at the end, the ending, and like there you go. Right. That <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's cool. Nice. So we get to some questions. So I, the first question is like every artist had a story behind their name. So like what is the? I mean, your name is Kendall. Like how did you come up with Kenny? So um, it was more like a panic name more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, so it all started. I didn't even think about like releasing music anytime soon until um, the UWGB Music Fest came along. There was a festival on campus and they were advertising local artists. And I was like, well, if I want to make any kind of pursuit in this career, I ought to get up on stage and try and like showcase my stuff. So as I was filling out the application, I just put the name Kenny because um, my girlfriend's family, they kind of just started calling me Kenny, just like a little bit of a, a nickname in that sphere. But uh, I was filling it out and I was like, well, I'll, I'll put a little I to be funny. And then I just, I, I don't know, I never got around to find anything different. But I, and ideally, you know what? I am Kenny. So yeah. like, I feel like it kind of fits in a way. It's stuck. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not like jumping to change it. That kind yeah. Of thing. I think it, it's definitely fitting. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So the other question is um, so like, when you write new music, what is like the creative process? And does it like change every time? Stay consistent? Usually my music process. I feel like there's a few different ways that like I kind of let the music come to me. There's uh, like there's one side where it's like, OK, I'm going to sit down and try and make a song where I'll usually if I'm sitting down to make like a random song that I'm just kind of trying to find, I'll start with drums uh, because that's my primary instrument. I feel most comfortable kind of and I with that instrument and then I can I feel like I can differentiate it and make it personal to the song like first and then kind of build off that with like the different uh, melodic accents and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I'll start with drums. Usually then I'll try and come up with a, a bass line of some sort. And then at that point, I just kind of start throwing in like chords and melodies and seeing what sticks, see what stays. And a lot of the time I end up not really liking it. But um, 
again, with like everything sticking, it's just to like know that this is what I can or can't do. And another thing I like to do with those ideas is like bring them back. Because even if I think at the moment they're not good or worthwhile, I can still potentially use them somewhere else, which is how a lot of the songs I made for my recent album were made. Uh, with that little bit of time crunch, it felt like really natural to just kind of insert random elements that I'd thought of earlier, but then into one cohesive song. Um, so that's one part of me is sitting down and writing a song. The other part is I'll hear, sometimes I like hear a melody in my head or like I'll like catch like a, a whiff of something or like the creative energy juices that the world is putting out. Um, and I'll just jump to it, you know. Um, again, in the book that I was talking about earlier by Rick Rubin, he mentions that uh, creativity in its own way is like very spontaneous because it's like unnat like it's naturally unnatural in a way like it's just like anyways um but yeah i i've, I've just always try and like throw stuff at it to kind of see uh, what works with the with the song so if i get a melody i'll just sit down start with the part that i hear and then kind of build off that to try and create a cohesive song around it um and then lyrics are always last for me though i i don't know why it's hard for me to like sit down and write like a catchy chorus necessarily but I feel like once I have something in front of me, I can kind of like hum a chorus to it or hum what I at least like want to hear from a chorus. And then it's much easier to kind of build off of it from that. And when like it comes to the lyrics, I feel like it's extra easy because I try and kind of replicate what I was feeling while I was making the music itself to kind of help it feel a little bit authentic. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the main process. Otherwise, um, like... If, I, if I'm in like a class or something and I'm playing something and I'll remember it and I'll just keep that and like save it for later. So yeah. that's that's about it. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's cool how you just like, you know, you think of something and, and like you like talk about full, just like creative, you know, something comes and goes and you just want to like capture that. Exactly. And then you, 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 you can be like, oh, this is what, this is what fits. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I was missing. Kind of like fill that puzzle piece. Right. And I've been really trying to force myself to go sit down and explore any of like ideas that come in. Because like as much as you're going to like repeat it in your head to try and remember it, I, or at least for me, I always feel like it's gone like the yeah. next day. And I'm like, oh, that could have been a song. So I've just been really trying to uh, push that narrative. Yeah, definitely record everything. Like, right. You, you never know what you can exactly. use. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Sample that into some other song later on the line. Exactly. Yeah. Recycling. Music yeah. recycling, you know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. So I kind of want to go back. So you talk about your, um, your album that you just released. Yes. Will you World. So how did that come about? Um, so it wasn't initially going to be like a comp, like a, a complete album necessarily. I was going to call it like my GB music fest mix and just kind of put it out there for the world. But, um, as I started writing it, I realized I was like, they were all, all the songs that are like, everything I was feeling was kind of about the same, like feelings, like that coming of age type of stuff. So yeah. it was really easy for me to kind of come and like wrap that in an album, um, but yeah, so the Music Fest essentially pushed me to really like push out the album. And uh, as I was writing for it, I have was kind of retrospectively thinking about like the growth I've done and like um, trying to push that out. So it's it's meant to be somewhat of like an uplifting album, you know, rule your world. It's your world. Um, you, you're supposed to rule it, that kind of thing. Um, and that was mainly based on I've been again on like self reflection I've been like trying to think I've been learning about like perspectives and how your perspective on things completely obviously changes how it like interacts with your brain and around you um so I guess this album was me trying to find myself as a whole to push out what I didn't necessarily want and what I held dear so um this was me I'm just putting myself out there I guess in my growth as an artist over X amount of time um, and just kind of as like uh, supportive also just like a little bit like revealing about myself um, it's, it's a little it's a little bit of everything you know that's kind of uh, why I really liked it so that's awesome and you did it and you it's out there it's out it's there everywhere. everywhere all platforms literally anywhere <laughs> I think you can listen to music you'll find my album so. yeah and you perform some of these live I did yes yeah. so um, there was a music festival I mentioned earlier uh, GB Music Fest, yeah, and the first GB Music Fest, the first one ever, yeah. part of history. Um, and my album is only thirty-five minutes, but I had an hour-long set that I signed up for, 
I was like, okay, well, how am I going to fill this time? So I reached out to A Train, who you heard earlier, great guy. And I was like, hey, uh, would you like to collab on some songs or just collab for a performance uh, for the music festival? Because I was, I had a DJ board. I was, I was up there <laughs> <laughs> DJing and um, I was like, we could totally work something out. And luckily it worked out for our schedules. We were hoping to write more music together to prepare it and kind of have that collaboration. But just with the timing of everything and being that the festival was towards the end of the year, mm -hmm. we didn't really have a lot of time to uh, plan out a lot of the work we wanted to do, especially in like such a short time frame. Like I think mm -hmm. I signed up in February. The performance was April. Um, so yeah, we, we collaborated. We found a vibe for our two songs and it was it was a really good time. Um, we had quite a few people show up and, um, yeah, a, a train did a great job on his songs. He pre pre previewed a few of his songs that he released on his, uh, album that he dropped or his mixtape, I yep, should say. Um, and then I played my album and I had, I had a lot of fun. It was really nerve wracking to be up there, especially with all the, like the lights shining on you. Mm -hmm. And it, I was wearing a lot of clothes. I should have, <laughs> I should have dressed <laughs> lighter, but, um, so I was, I was really sweaty, but overall it was, it was a, it was a fun experience just like getting myself out there and oh, yeah. showing my music. Um, so I, I, I really did have a lot of fun with that. That's cool. Yeah. I'm glad it was, it was really cool seeing you out there. I mean, you killed it. So. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah. you. I mean, that's just like you said, just all these opportunities, you just want to like, you know, take and just gotta just do it. Just right. do it stick. Just like, gotta do it. Right. Yeah. You know, just getting yourself out there and these opportunities on campus, like um, having stages open for artists like you just to show, you know, what you, what your art is and just being able to, because like with college and everything, it's all practice. Mm -hmm. So getting, you know, the practice, I mean, even with, um, with music classes and everything, it's all like repetition and practicing and being out in front of stages, you know, yeah. getting used to like that. That way, when you do go and perform anywhere else, you know, you've had that practice and, you know. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's I, nothing. I, exactly right. Yeah. And now that I've been doing it more, like putting myself out there, like it feels natural, you know. Um, and especially with like the experiences that are on campus, like it just makes it so easy or easier for students to get their stuff out there, which is which is really awesome. I really I really love that about the school. It's awesome. Yeah. So we, we're talking still about the music festival. So what was like your favorite part? Would you Ooh. say about that? My favorite part. There were a lot of really great groups that I saw because I was there for the whole day. Um, Ditch the Hubcap uh, classic of this show. Um, they had a really good set. It was it, it was a little unbelievable because um, their drummer uh, was couldn't attend the event. Like something last minute came mm -hmm. up. So I believe uh, is Kyle. Do you know if Kyle's their guitarist or bassist? No, he's, he's a guitarist. He's guitarist. Yeah, guitar. yep. John. Uh yeah, John's the bassist. Oh, right, because yeah. so and then they had to switch. They switched. Yeah, yeah. John went on guitar, and yeah, then and Kyle went on drums. And like, <laughs> honestly, you couldn't tell the difference. It it was absolutely insane, and because they still had the same amount of energy, they were still it's still a fun show. I mean, still missing like the full band, but it was still a good show. Consider like if I had never seen them or heard of them before, I wouldn't have even known that something necessarily went wrong. Like mm -hmm. so, that that part was also yeah. That that was probably my favorite event that I saw. Um. Yeah. Yeah. And they were actually before you guys, right? They, yeah. Su Super Glue, that's a hubcap. And then, um, yeah. Yeah, for it, sure. It, it, Su Super Glue was really good too. Yeah. I, I, I'm a big fan of shoegaze, like rock and that very loud, like um, somewhat like droning guitar sound that's so like popular with shoegaze. Like, yeah, that, that was such a fun show to see. Yeah. That's cool. And yeah. like you got, you got to bring your own DJ deck too. I did. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. And if I learned it, I'd say probably like uh, two weeks, probably <laughs> before okay. the event. Um, but I, you know, I, I feel like I can do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's cool. So um, do you have any other upcoming music release in the near future? Um, not that I'm familiar with at the moment. Right now, I'm just trying to create new stuff that I can present in the future. OK. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think. Well, I've, I, well, I'm always in the. I've been a part of the jazz band on campus oh, yeah. as well. Um, so uh, there will be a lot more performances for that. I play the the drum kit uh, for the group, and um, so the, so there will be a lot more performances with that, which I I really love playing jazz. I think it's it's such a 
relaxing um, like style. And I feel like since it's so relaxed, you can show a lot more of yourself within it. It's considering okay. with like soloing or like mm -hmm. the different like elements that are within jazz. I, I just love playing it. It's so fun. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean, just improvising with jazz too is pretty interesting. Exactly, right. Uh -huh. Like, especially with um, one of my favorite things in jazz is when people like trade fours. It's like they're having like a an instrument conversation. I, I think that's that's the coolest thing ever is that like having that form of like connection within a group through the music. It's just, it's beautiful. It's truly beautiful. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Talking about the other, there's one new music that you, you brought with us today, actually. I did. The pre-release. The pre-release of a new single. Yep. It's yep. called uh, Naive Focus. Um, it's all instrumental, so you won't have to, <laughs> you won't hear me sing, but um, yeah, that's I'm I'm excited for you guys to hear it. It's, it's uh, I'm really proud of this one. It's all instrumental, but I promise it's all fun. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, that's this is your new music that you're working on right now. Oh, you just you just finished it, and it's releasing this Friday. Yes, it is. This is the exclusive premiere on Radio GBX. But um, yep, it releases everywhere you could ever think of to have music. I'm pretty sure <laughs> on Friday. Um, so go check it out. It's gonna be fun. Um. Yeah, I'm really excited for it to be out because this is one I came up with probably at the beginning of the summer. And that's one I had been kind of just sitting on for a while. It okay. was one where I kept throwing things at it and nothing was sticking. Like I wanted I was hoping to add like vocals or like some other elements, but none of it like ever sounded right. Like it mm -hmm. was it wasn't it wasn't the original song anymore. It was something totally different, which is cool in its own way. But I I was just really happy with the version I had. So I'm really excited for you guys to hear it. All right. Should we play it? All right, yeah, but before we do, I have some more music I'd like to say. So we've got, obviously, first we've got Radio GBX exclusive with Kenny's song, Nave Focus, but we've also got music from Presley with Pineapple Man and some more A-Train on the way. Stick around on Radio GBX.
here on Radio GBX. We have Kenny here with us. Anaya. Hello again. Hello. So you released your new album, Will You Will, this year. Yes. And now you have your new single coming out this yes. Friday. Yeah. Uh, my new single, you just heard it, uh, mm-hmm. Now You Focus, all instrumental. Um, and again, I had a really, I had a really fun time uh, figuring out this song. I was mentioning earlier my creative process. I forgot to mention that like the beginning part when I'm trying to find a melody, it's just trying to find a catchy synth or like a, at least a cool sounding synth that I can use within the song. And uh, that first synth you hear, I just fell in love with it and I just kind of moved on with it from there, just adding more and more. Um, and since it is instrumental, I don't necessarily have like, uh, like this is the meaning of the song. Cause I feel like the, the nice thing with instrumental, there's a lot of uh, different interpretations just depend because since there isn't no lyrics to physically say what you're supposed to feel, it's it's much more up to interpretation, and I really love that. So I try and kind of separate myself from it in a way. But uh, when I was making it at the time, I felt like I called it naive focus because I felt like I was focusing on a lot of things that weren't inherently me, weren't inherently what I wanted to do, or like what I wanted to be focusing on. Um, that that's something I've always been struggling with ever since <laughs> I was an adult. But I've this song, when I heard it, I kind of interpreted it as this is letting go of those extra things that are holding you back, the things that you were naively or like childishly, maybe not childishly, but like things you maybe were focusing on that aren't as relevant anymore, that type of thing. Um, so it's all letting that go. And uh, I've I've I really love it for that because I've it's. Again, I feel like that's kind of what I was going through while I was making it and through making it was kind of a therapy from that being like, you know, it's going to be okay. Like I'm allowed to be me and do what I want, you know, that kind of thing, just more reassurance, (laughs) I guess. Um, But yeah, as Joe mentioned, um, it's going to be released this Friday, pretty much anywhere you can listen to music, Um, SoundCloud and Bandcamp included. Uh, All my stuff is on there, but um, yeah, it's going to be releasing everywhere. I'm hoping uh y'all like it it should be fun that's awesome like you said that's the synth like that timbre just like it just sounds so cool right isn't it <laughs> yeah. it's, it's so weird because i can't tell if it's like a guitar or like a piano or you, you we were talking you said yeah, a drum it's like it what like, is it has some weird like reverb to it like, exactly I know, yeah it like so cool. I, I, I especially i really like doing that when i'm making music as well as i like to see if i can kind of distort instruments oh, yeah. to sound completely different mm-hmm. um this one I didn't go too crazy with that, but I feel like that synth was just all you sounded good and just found something around it. Exactly, like, like the, the rhythm behind it too was just like moving. Like yeah, it, yeah, and th- that rhythm I learned to play, um, and like as I was playing it, I was like, this has got to go somewhere in what I'm making, and I feel like this was like the perfect drive for this song. So, it, yeah. it, I had really I had a lot of fun experimenting with it. Um, it's fun, but yeah, yeah, you heard it here first. Coming soon, Friday. Yes, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, where can we listen to your music? So um, my album and uh, this new single coming up Friday, you can check me out on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, YouTube Music, uh, what, Pandora. Um, uh, for sure, Bandcamp, SoundCloud, and all of like, there's a bunch of other smaller ones that are mm-hmm. less popular, I should say, that it's going to as well. So um I, I say if you listen to music somewhere, it should be <laughs> on there, <laughs> be there for you to find. So, uh, again, that's Kenny, and the song's called Naive Focus. Awesome. Do you have any other, like, social media or anything that you use? Um, not primarily. I have an Instagram uh, that I've been working on a bit, but uh, so you can find me on there. Uh, but also, I, I am, uh, I'm on SoundCloud and Bandcamp. I have On SoundCloud, I have a bunch of demos and, like, uh, like certain class projects that I've been working on. Uh, on there so you can find some of, some of that stuff there um awesome. yeah. and we'll put a lot of links in the description of the video too so go to check thank, it all you. Out. thank you <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah so um before we like wrap the show is any final thoughts you want to say anything you've been involved in you talked about you involved in jazz on campus um i mean you could talk about any other thing you're involved in working on campus too yeah um so as mentioned i'm in the jazz band i've been doing a lot of that um, on campus, and then we all, every once in a while we do what's called a jazz jam, where we just yeah. essentially go in uh, the Phoenix Club, and we just play a bunch of jazz charts for a while, and just kind of it's it's very open and free, so you'll probably see me around there performing uh, for those. But if you can make it, it's a lot of fun. A lot of songs I guarantee 
you would recognize it's just in a it's in a different context, which is it's very fun. Um, yeah. Um, anything else coming up? No, I think besides that, I'm just gonna. I'll, you can bet I'll be in my studio just cranking out. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> as many not as many as many quality tunes as I can. My goal is to hopefully try and release an EP or some sort of collection of what I've made over the summer again, kind of just to. For me to track my own personal growth in a way, this is me during summer of 2024 type of thing. Um, so if that is a thing, the single will be on there. But um, yeah, that's that's about it for me that I'm working on. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I look forward to hearing more from you. Yes, dude. Yeah. Be working in the new studio that's being built soon next yes. fall. I, yeah, no, then oh, I'll yeah. have the actual equipment. Oh, I don't yeah. have to work on my, <laughs> my cheap mic to try and record stuff I can have a studio it'll be amazing i mean even what you make right now and what you have like it's not only about the equipment but it's really about what you what you can do and, like your skills like as an exactly artist. So, like you just creative like process like you know just you know people get wrapped around like just the equipment but it's like you just got to do with what you have and like make it work right like uh there's this album uh it's called death consciousness by have a nice life mm -hmm. and it's it's hilarious because like the original recordings i guess got lost so they had to use like mp3s so there's yeah. a lot of like stuff missing and it sounds very weird but it adds to the whole experience of the album like it it, it weird like the how it's like not properly like mixed or like it really adds to the impact of the album uh, if you haven't heard that check it out it, okay. it, 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 you'll cry but it's it's a good cry i promise <laughs> awesome well, thank you kenny for joining us tonight hey yeah thank you so much for having me i as you know the studio is awesome it was finally great to come check it out um, and to get to play some of my tracks. Uh, I'll do one more shameless plug. Uh, yeah, <laughs> my, my new, my album, Fool Your World, streaming everywhere. If you're looking for a little bit of moody, ambient dance, pop, synth pop, a little bit of hip hop in there, um, definitely check it out. And then of course my new single, uh, Naive Focus, releasing this Friday everywhere. Um, um, I hope you guys can get to check it out. Again, this is Kenny and Joe, thank you for having me. Yeah. I've had a really good time. Thank you. And if you missed it, we'll put this up on YouTube later. We'll show all of your links and we'll um I'll show you a link too. Thank you. So everyone check out the new new single coming out this nice. Friday. Nice. Thank you for um everyone joining us tonight. Um for the first Wednesday of every month as we um interview local artists like Kenny here, the Green Bay area. And if you missed today's show, don't like I said, don't forget to check it out on YouTube, watch the full video with Kenny. Um don't forget to smash the like button. Give <laughs> us a like. And thank you. Now the show is over. <laughs>